Hello everybody, my name is Zach Dernak and I will be your guide today through Old Main here at Penn State University. I just graduated in the spring of 2021 with a degree from the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications. Come and join me today on a tour of the historic Old Main here at Penn State. Let's take a look inside and see what it has to offer us. All right, so right now we are inside Old Main. This building in its first iteration was actually all of Penn State University. So um, as you can see, it is much more grand than um, probably what was around when the charter was established in 1855. Um, but this building actually used to be all of campus. So that means the classrooms, um, dining halls, offices, residential areas, those all existed in this building. Um, the building was actually established um, completely without electricity um, in 1859, so that means that it was run through um, coal furnaces and oil-lit lamps. However, that was changed in 1887 when it went through its first remodel, um, changing it over to electricity and central steam heat. Um, then in 1892, the upper floors actually um, caught on fire due to a um, coal furnace um, fire. So the upper floor um, actually went through a renovation in 1892, um, giving it its now um, Gothic style. Um, and then once we reached 1928, um, the building had incurred so many different problems as time went on and the building aged that they completely tore it down and rebuilt it to the version that we now see today, um, which opened up in 1930. So over here we have a bust of Evan Pugh. So Evan Pugh was actually the first president of Penn State University. Um, back then it was called the Farmers High School of Pennsylvania. Um, so Evan Pugh's tenure lasted from 1859 to 1864. Um, and we honor him as the first president because he set the foundations for what this university is and what it has grown to be. Without people like Evan Pugh, we wouldn't have presidents like George Atherton who established our academic college system or presidents like Ralph Dorn Hetzel who established um, the beginnings of the Commonwealth campus system um, or even Milton Eisenhower who is the one who named University Park the town that Penn State is held in and establishing our own zip code. So, Old Main really is a wonderful tribute to Evan Pugh himself and all that he has given us here at Penn State. So speaking of Evan Pugh and presidents, we also um, around the hallway of the first floor lobby have these portraits of all of our past Penn State presidents. Um, and you can really feel their presence as you're standing here in the lobby of Old Main. All right, so you may be thinking how this whole building was built. Um, and we can distribute that to a wonderful mule named Coley, or Old Coley, as we like to call him at Penn State. He is actually a mule that helped the students um, construct the first iteration of Old Main. Um, he was responsible for carrying the stone from the quarry downtown, which is where the corner room restaurant sits, um, up to the lawn to build Old Main, handed off to students where they were responsible for setting the stone and establishing the first iteration of Old Main, Old Coley actually, as a result, became our mascot in 1893 um, and lasted up until the time that the Nittany Lion actually took over in 1904. But we still honor Old Coley today. He still is a friend on campus here today, um, and he is always in our hearts. All right, so as I said before, um, Penn State was actually founded as the Farmers High School of Pennsylvania. We were established under the Morrill Land Grant Act, 1862. Um, it was originally established as a school to allow residents of Pennsylvania to study agriculture and to expand the agriculture of the United States. Um, it wasn't until 1862 that we actually became the Agricultural College of Pennsylvania. Um, then as we expanded more, we became the Pennsylvania um, State College in 1874, and then it wasn't actually until 1953 when Penn State became so big that we actually changed our name to Penn State University. So um, just in that short amount of time, you can see how much Penn State has expanded and the rich history that has occurred here at this historic university. And that is all actually outlined here with the old main frescoes. Um, so the frescoes are actually 
a um, unique installed art piece here in Old Main. What is unique about them is that it is not actually a painting that was painted on canvas and installed, but instead it is painted onto wet plaster, so that way it creates a more long-lasting and a completely unique texture in terms of an art piece and in terms of a painting style. So these are actually um, two different class gifts. The north facing wall that I am at right here was actually the gift of the class of 1932. And then the east and west walls are actually the class gift of 1948. They are painted by Henry Varnum Poor and his daughter Anne. Um, and they are meant to depict the story of Penn State University and our foundings and important figures and student life, especially here at Penn State. So you can see that reflected in the very beginning right here. Um, we have Abraham Lincoln, who was the president during the Moral Land Grant Act, um, sowing seeds of a tree to establish um, representatively the Penn State University or the Farmers High School of Pennsylvania, as it was called. Um, and you can see scholars on to his left. And then on the other side, next to Henry Varnum Poor, we have um, students starting out the agricultural seeds of a college, again, signifying the beginnings of Penn State University. Um, so this wall was, as I said, the earliest wall, completed in 1932. The project was actually cut short due to World War II and funding being reallocated to that. So um, that's why in 1948, he actually was invited back um, due in part to the class of 1948 to um, complete the project where they re-raised the money to complete these brand new walls, which um, even just a 16 year time span, the vision of Penn State and the vision of the college as a whole completely changed. And that's why it went from focusing on things like academics and the beginnings of Penn State to, as you can see here, we have a beautiful depiction of student life, which was becoming such a prominent thing um, and a prominent topic um, at Penn State as these were being completed. Um, they realized that college was no longer about academics alone, but about the student experience in general. And so that is all beautifully reflected here in the land grant frescoes, thanks to Henry Varden Poor um, and his beautiful artistry. Another piece of the land grant frescoes that I love to point out is this portrait here of prominent figures at the time of um, this completion of the wall in 1948. Um, it is a sort of tableau of prominent figures of Penn State at the time. Um, the favorite one that I love to point out is this woman right here, rumored to either be Frances Atherton, the wife of George Atherton, who is also very influential to the college, or it is also rumored to be Mary McElwin, who is actually the first woman to attend Penn State University. So through the iterations of Old Main that we've seen, um, it has gone from all of campus to the hub of student life, housing things like the Daily Collegian or the YMCA on campus. But now the building is actually used mainly only for administrative reasons and administrative offices. So obviously we have the office of President Eric Barron, the current standing president here at Penn State, but also housed in this building are the offices of other um, prominent senior members of Eric Barron's cabinet, such as the executive Pri vice president and provost of students, Nick Jones. We also have the senior vice president of development, Rich Bundy, and we also have of the executive chancellor of the Commonwealth campuses, Madeline Haynes, housed in here as well. So the Old Main Clock Tower is obviously a very prominent part of this building. The clock tower was actually bestowed upon us and the chimes inside it as well as part of the long-standing class gift campaign here at Penn State. In its early days, it did gift things that were more physical in nature, such as the clock, um, the clock tower and the chimes. Now it has obviously moved on into more long-standing and non-physical things. Um, this past year, we established the Education Equity Access Fund as part of the class gift. But um, more importantly, the clock tower is actually the class gift of 1904. So that is the clock itself and the structure surrounding it. So that way students always knew the time. And then the Westminster chimes were actually gifted as part of the class gift of 1937. Now the Westminster chimes, while they still sit in the bell tower, actually are no longer used anymore. Now they are completely electronic, but to honor its legacy, the Westminster chimes still sit in there to welcome all the alum that come back to campus, welcome students that happen to pass by Old Main, and especially on the weekends, make sure that everybody here is hail to the lion every Friday and Saturday on campus. 
Even though there is no student use inside Old Main today, the outside of Old Main and the lawn is always packed with student life during the academic year. Um, the lawn of Old Main is always filled with students on picnics or playing any sort of outdoors games like volleyball or squash ball um, or even doing homework, even students taking naps, whatever you want. Um, the patio of Old Main as well is also prominent for any sort of political activism that occurs here on campus um, or any sort of rally or memorial service as well that occurs on campus. Um, we have things like the campus pride rally that occur on the patio of Old Main. We also have the Memorial Day um, service and the 9-11 service and observation that occurs on the Old Main patio as well. So we are here closing off our tour at the sundial on Old Main Lawn, which is the class gift of 1915. The sundial reads, grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. I think this is a perfect encapsulation of Penn State and Old Main right here at the heart of campus. We started out as the Farmers High School of Pennsylvania in just this one small building, and we've grown into the 24 Commonwealth campuses that span across all of Pennsylvania and even to the world campus, which goes all the way across the globe. So thank you so much for joining me on this tour of Old Main today at Penn State University.